Hi everyone, Teddy Baldessar here. And in this video, I'm going to be reacting to your watch collection. So had some people submit different collections, have a few here that we can kind of go through together. And my whole hope for this video is to perhaps show other people and actually what they're doing with their money and building their collection. I think very much when you're on here, YouTube, very often, it, it's kind of tough to get outside of the isolated journey of yourself. So I, what I basically want to do is put front and center to showcase other people that are doing some awesome things with their collection at a variety of different price ranges, because I think it's important to show that you know, they don't have to spend all the money in the world to have a great watch collection. So have a bunch of different collections, different levels, and wanted to kind of share my thoughts. And then ultimately at the end, kind of just give either a recommendation or just closing thoughts on the collection. But please leave comments down below about what you think. And also what collection is your favorite at the end? Let me see comments down below. And before we get into this video, I do want to officially announce the winner of the giveaway. I know I've had this open for about a month or so. So this is the $1,500 giveaway on teddybaldestar.com. Pick out three watches. You get to pick one of those watches that you selected of those watches up to $1,500. So there were 69,000 people that submitted. I was pretty blown away about the amount of participation in this one. So if you're not chosen, don't get sad. <laughs> the odds were against you to begin with, but We'll do more of these in the future if you guys want to do more of these in the future. So I'd be happy to do it. Now, the winner is, we can get a drum roll out there, Daniel Grip. So Daniel Grip is the winner. So two Ps on that one. So that is the winner. He will have 48 hours to claim his prize. So if he does not claim it, it is going to be open again to other winners. So if I don't make a formal announcement on Instagram or anything like that, it means that Daniel picked out his watch. So he had three watches that he had, First one was going to be the Gentleman Powermatic 80 with a blue dial. He also selected the Meister Classic with the silver dial, and then also came in with the Khaki Navy Scuba as his third choice. So Daniel is our lucky winner. He'll get to pick out one of those watches, and we'll do another one of these again, but thank you to all of you that participated. We'll do one again very soon. All right, so now our first collection is from Michael. So let's take a look at what he has. His first piece that he has here is the Rolex Explorer 214-270, uh, loom within the numerals on that one. So we also have the Tudor Black Bay 58 Silver, so new acquisition, I would imagine, there. Also comes in with the Oris Aquas Clean Ocean Limited Edition. Then he also has a Ferro Titanium, then a Yema Flygraph Pilot, and then a Timex Expedition. So just some things here in terms of notes. He also mentioned that the Oris was his first watch. He would never sell it. Pretty interesting backstory with this one is he actually followed somebody on YouTube who was just posting random videos and really liked the watch and asked if he could buy it off of them. And eventually they just kind of spawned up a nice little relationship and that was his first official watch buddy. So that's the only one he said he would not part with. But I think this is a really balanced collection. So he had, we had different ranges for price, uh, just kind of buckets that people could kind of fall in. So this was the $10,000 to $25,000 range. So a lot of money to be throwing at watches, but in regards to what he's been able to do with it, I think his top three pieces are incredibly strong. Rolex Explorer 214 270. I mean, you really can't do better from an everyday perspective from a luxury watch. That one is a huge thumbs up. Tudor Black Bay Silver, still very interested to see how these things are going to age. You see with the Black Bay uh, bronzes, how those kind of age a little bit more gracefully than a lot of other bronze watches. So I have the same type of just optimism for that. Uh, but that is a really great piece. The 58, I'm a huge fan of, have one myself. And then also the Oris Aquas Clean Ocean Limited Edition because it has that sentimental value, this was kind of that gateway drug. There's a lot to like there. And then you also have a couple just, I would say more like micro brand. I mean, Yema, I've heard a lot of buzz about. I need to spend a bit more time with their pieces. I can't speak about them in great authority uh, compared to a lot of other brands that I've spent a lot of time with, uh, but hearing a lot of buzz around them and from the outside, their pieces look really sharp. Ferrer is a great micro brand in the UK, which they just make a great product. And then you also have the Timex Expedition. I think this is a really balanced collection in terms of what's next. For Michael, I mean, I think you could probably go for, I mean, I don't know if this is in your kind of wheelhouse, but maybe like a high-end dress watch from the likes of JLC, maybe throwing in a chronograph here as well. I think that could also be probably pretty interesting, maybe from like Zenith or Omega. It just kind of depends on where you want to go, but it seems like you have a good mix of kind of mainstream versus stuff that is a little bit off the beaten path. And I think that's a great way to keep things balanced. 
So next up, with a little bit more of an affordable collection, we have Fabian, and Fabian has a nice breakdown here. So he has a Seiko Samurai SRPC93, so a Save the Ocean, also an SSC621P1. He also has a Casio Oceanus. That is a sleeper, underrated, kind of beater watch, really great choice. And then he also has a Casio G-Shock GST-W300G. And then to round it out, basically his grail watch, the Omega Seamaster Professional Diver 300 meter. So just some backstory here. So his first watch was the Samurai. It looks like he made some modifications to that with the bezel, uh, but that dial, really amazing on that one. So he was working in sales, sold some of his watches, and really just held out for that grail, which was that Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter. He looks to have an older generation model, so that looks like to be the 2500 uh, Omega coaxial. So that was when they were kind of shifting in the new coaxial calibers into the Seamasters. Really sharp piece, ceramic bezel. It looks great on him as well. I mean, the reason why I, I really like this collection is Total, he's having it under $5,000. He's got a good balance of those Seikos that I think could, he can wear out really casually, kind of that gateway pieces that he has. The Oceanus is an underrated piece. Don't get confused with Casio on the dial. That is a very serious watch. G-Shock, you can't go wrong. And then you also have that Grail. And I think quantity versus quantity, he's got the base, he kind of developed his taste, and he went after the thing that he really wanted. And I think that's so important when it comes to watches because life is simply too short. All right, so next up we have Nick and I had a little spot where I had, you know, hey, just fill in some information about your collecting philosophy or anything that's important. And all Nick said was, I buy, collect what I like and enjoy wearing. Trends don't matter. And I think that's great. I think that's fantastic. So first up, he has a Longa Cabernet and that is a 107027 reference. So very interesting watch from Longa and that's just gonna be more to come. One that's a bit more familiar probably for most people, the 1815, the up down. So with the power reserve, classy piece. And then also, the epitome of the Longa dress watch with the Longa moon phase. That looks to be back black dial, white gold, 38.5 millimeter. That is an incredibly sharp watch. He also got some close-ups of this watch. It looks great. Thanks for the great photos. That's fantastic. Another underrated sleeper of a sports watch with the Blanc Pond Barracuda. One of the most wearable Blanc Ponds out there. And I actually, I mean, this is where the faux markers for me, I looks so good. Love the personality there. Also the Zenith El Primero original 1969. I mean, that is that is kind of like the connoisseur's chronograph watch in many ways, I see it as. That's a fantastic original uh, tricolor registers on that. Then he also has a Grand Seiko GMT SBGJ 235. So that is a great looking piece as well. He also got some close-ups of the dial can kind of show those kind of striations with the dial surface. And then a personal favorite of mine, and it's crazy because uh, this probably looks like his beater watch, but the Zen U50T, and you got the, the SDR version. I did a review of the Zen U50, the SDR, I personally like the looks of that black bezel. It just looks so sharp at the double AR coating on that thing. Zen U50, one of my favorite watches, so German utilitarian and so Zen, love that watch. And then a 1962 Omega Constellation pipe hand dial. Honestly, Nick is coming in with some crazy, crazy watches. And you can tell that this is somebody that really doesn't really care about what anybody else is saying. And honestly, his collection speaks volumes. Like everything here just speaks to a guy that's just gonna do his own thing and doesn't care at all. They're, these are connoisseur pieces. Longa is such a connoisseur brand. Blanc Pond's a connoisseur brand. Grand Seiko, Zinn, Zenith, and then a vintage constellation, which I'm a per personally a big fan of. Honestly, I don't really know what else to say except keep doing what you're doing and just enjoy what you have. I, I don't think you really need to think about it, but I would just think about what watches mean to you at this stage. When you have this much money into watches and you're fortunate enough to own these incredible watches, just probably just have a moment of reflection to understand like, you know, what's next for me, identify what that next stage is or whatever the philosophy is, but I don't think you need any insight at all. You seem to be doing an amazing job and your collection is badass. So next up we have Casey. So Casey has a background in the military. So he has first a few different citizen watches, one that he was actually using uh, as um, a pilot in the actual US military. So that is really cool. A diver that he was actually to, uh, able to dive with in Japan. And then a Navahawk that was actually gifted to by his brother. So that's a nice balance there. I like that. And you can also see the scratches on those. That's what you'd like to see because he's actually using them as they were intended. So, and also thank you for your service. Also, we have a Hamilton Pilot and an Orient Kamasu and a Dress KX, which he did mod around the bezel. So that's pretty interesting. And then in regards to all of those watches, I think pretty safe choices. And then at the end, he also has the Zin 104 and that is the blue dial with the Arabic. So I, I love the blue dial on the Zin. I wish they had one with just the traditional markers, but really sharp looking watch. I mean, I, I love the blue with the Zen 104 formula. So this was kind of his grail everyday tool watch. You have that background in the military. 
I think this is a very nice collection. I like how he's, you know, figuring out what he really likes. He's got a good balance of just kind of tool watches. That's really much a part of his ethos. I would think a bit more about kind of for what's next is, you know, you got the Zen, you've got uh, Hamilton. I think those are two brands that I would have recommended right off the bat. So if you want to keep leaning in, and I think it's important to, don't feel like you have to check off the boxes for just the general type of consumer. Think about checking off the boxes for you and what you care about. So you really don't need anything else, but if I was gonna say what would be next, maybe just lean farther into the tool wash. So maybe look at something like a Doxa, uh, cause I think you'd probably like that with the colors. And I think the history there with diving, Zodiac, maybe something there. I think that's a bit more of a design uh, friendly type of brand, or you could really lean into the tool wash and go with something like a Mula, a Marathon or a Damasco, as I think that would really complement the Zen. And I think would allow you to stay in that same range and tier. Uh, but overall, I think for, you know, thousand to 5,000 bucks, I think he's got a good balance and he's actually using his watches, which is great. All right, so next up we have Justin and Justin looking at his collection. First, he has a Rolex Submariner 16613, so the bluesy. And that was a watch that was actually gifted to him by his grandfather. He never was actually aspiring to own a Rolex, but that was something that was gifted to him. And, you know, he's very excited about it. He loves the watch. He also has an Omega Speedmaster and an Omega Constellation Manhattan, which was gifted to him as his first luxury watch. His dad gave it to him when he graduated university. So that's the Manhattan case on that one. Huge fan of the Constellation, I think, as many of you guys know. In addition, he also has a Grand Staco Snowflake, SBGA 211. Nothing really needs to be said about that. Great choice if you're trying to get into Grand Seiko. He also has a Cartier Roadster, which he said he had kind of an up and down relationship with, but has really come to love it after an impulse purchase. He also has a Geo Panamatic Lunar, great looking watch. He does mention that he does want a Longo One or was very much looking at a Longo One, but that price tag. And then he also has this very unique IWC perpetual calendar that he said he got at an incredible deal for just a few thousand dollars. So to get a perpetual from a brand like IWC for that amount of money, I know the service costs are gonna cost something, but still that's pretty cool to be able to get into uh, that complication at that price. And then finally, a Zenith DeFi 21 black ceramic. And that is a killer piece. I am a huge fan of Zenith. I also just love the um, DeFi 21. It's, it's a little out there for a lot of people, but this is one of those watches that kind of sneaks up on you. And you kind of mentioned that with kind of writing this out, it's with the black ceramics going to take on scratches incredibly well. You've got an amazing wrist roll of this thing to show that black ceramic case off saying it's great at resisting scratches. And I think Zenith in terms of what they're providing at the price, one of the best in the range, like I mentioned, very much a connoisseur's brand. And this is kind of more of the crazy stuff that they're doing. In terms of what is being packed in this watch, skeletonized dial, also with getting the dual balance wheels as well, that one is gonna be oscillating at a crazy high beat frequency, being able to track one 100th of a second. It is very mind blowing when you see that second hand just rotating for the first time. So great watch, I think great balance with this collection as well. I like how you have a connection of both watches that mean a lot to you sentimentally, and then you also will have watches that you kind of maybe reach for, uh, maybe you got on a cool deal, and you also have kind of your high tech watch that's very modern with the Zenith D521. He has a good mix of, I would say, more popular watches, looking at something like the Grand Seiko uh, Snowflake, as well as the Omega Speedmaster, and then stuff that's a little bit more out there and off the beaten path where you still know you're an enthusiast, while still being incredible pieces for the money if you really care about all things horology with uh, Geo and Zenith. What, being provided there. I would just hold out for maybe that really nice, maybe aspirational piece at this point. When you have some incredible watches, I think the only place to go from here is maybe go for that type of grail, unless you have something in this range that you also wanna check off. But right now, very nice collection. All right, so next up we have Sager. So Sager has probably the most distinctive and a very different philosophy when it comes to collecting, but it's so unique. And I think this is important when going about this and looking at just building your collection. You don't have to follow anybody else's formula do what you want to do. So first he has a Daniel Roth Salmon Master Chrono. He also has a Gerald Genta Jump Hour as well. Also he has an Omega Jump Hour Salmon Dial reference 4853. That's the only Omega with a Jump Hour. That's incredible and well curated and thought out. And then he also has another Omega with a Salmon Dial. I You don't see Omegas with Salmon Dials very often. And it's a 40th anniversary edition. So this is a boutique edition uh, in the Japanese market. So he was able to really nail this one down really sharp looking piece. Then he also has some other additional salmon dials. So he has a salmon dial from the Saab 037. I actually reviewed his personal model on the channel in the past, basically calling it the Seiko watch you can't have because you really can't find that thing anywhere. Very rare Seiko. He also has another rare Saab with the Saab 011 with this red wine dial, really striking. He took some nice photos of it. So you can kind of just see that 
nice just effect that it has and changing in different lighting conditions. He has the very popular in the last year, the SPB149. So all of these new dive watches from the Seiko Prospects collection within the SPB, uh, like the 143 and this 149, uh, this one is a limited edition. The wearability on these, fantastic. Uh, I also just like the color as well and everything about those. Some of the best Seiko divers I've seen in quite some time. He also has some other interesting Seikos with the Seiko Alpinist Blue, uh, the Seiko Lord Matic. So that's pretty interesting throwback there as well. The Lord Matic is a very interesting line and part of Seiko's history that I don't think many people are familiar with. And that teal blue looks incredibly striking on your skin complexion, looks great. So then he also has the Seiko 5 Arabic markers, not Arabic numerals, Arabic markers, actually in Arabic. That's cool. I think that's a great way to have some fun with the Seiko 5 at uh, you know, an interesting range. And then finally, a Laurier Falcon Green, and he said he just wanted to try something new. But I personally just love this collection, is even more than what the watches are themselves. I just like how this is just such a distinctive and unique and personal uh, collection that was put together. You could tell that this was well curated, well thought out. You can see just kind of the overlap with the philosophy and what he's going for. I mean, if you have a Daniel Roth, a Gerald Genta, these obscure Omega references, that doesn't happen by accident. That's somebody that has an identified just path for themselves and what they want out of their own watches and what gives them the most joy. And I can appreciate that as well as even the Seikos and what he's got going on there. Cause he's got some crazy Seiko Sarbs and interesting references there. And then even dabbled into kind of the micro brand range as well. So now in terms of what's next, I mean, I would probably say go for something like a Hobrin Chrono Felix, Salmon Dial. It's a model that we've reviewed on the channel before. Love that watch. And I think that's right up your alley and what you like. And I think it would fit really well into this collection, especially next to that Daniel Roth and the Gerald Genta that you have there. And now for our final collection, we have John here. So John has a kind of a philosophy around micro brands. He really enjoys that. So right now he has a Monte Noble with kind of a Fume dial. He also has an Astro Banks Fortitude. The reason why he wanted to go for this brand is he's from Chicago, wanted a Chicago based micro brand. So a really cool watch. I think Astro Banks makes some fantastic looking pieces. Has a couple Laurier models. I've seen a lot of Laurier on this list. So we got Laurier Falcon 2 and a Neptune 2. A lot of just vintage intrigue with that brand. He also has a Hamilton Khaki Field, which was his entry door into the world of watches. That was kind of his gateway drug and a great one to have. I don't think you'll probably get a better uh, Swiss watch for the money. A classic Seiko 5 with the Seiko SNKL 41. And then at the end, the Casio Duro. So for John, he has definitely a lot of leaning into micro brands. And typically I, I'm not usually big on micro brands when you're first getting into your watch collecting journey, just because they are a little bit harder to get out of. When we're talking about Monta, Astor Banks, and Laurier, I mean, those are micro brands that people really know, but still I kind of keep that in mind. Uh, you do have some other things that are, are kind of staples. You have great Seiko, SNKL 41, Hamilton Khaki, can't really go wrong with that. And then also Casio Duro. I would just really think about what this next piece is going to be and don't buy anything with impulse, especially when you're at this stage because you figured things out. Now it's time to learn from what you purchased and go for that next one. Well, all right, guys, those are all the collections. If you did enjoy this video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. That would be a great indicator in just the future so we know if we want to do more of these. If you guys do want to do more of these, please leave comments down below for encouragement as well as what collection you like the most. I personally think this is a very helpful exercise to see what other people are collecting as just general enthusiasts because I think in just YouTube, there's sure there's a community around this, but there's a lot of just isolation just going on YouTube, watching videos about watches. It's cool to actually see other people and what they're doing on their own journey and what they're spending their money on. So I'd love to do more of this, but all really comes down to what you guys think, but I really do enjoy doing this and highlighting people that are, are watching and I really do appreciate the support. Also guys, thank you again for everybody that participated in the giveaway. We'll do another one soon. All that was made possible by teddybaldestar.com. Full authorized dealer for all the brands that we carry. Quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. Also full factory warranty for every watch that we sell. Have everything from entry level all the way up to brands like Nomos, Zenith, Oris, and brands of that sort. And all that makes this content possible. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.